and that's the kind of quality you can expect here. Minute to Win It is a TV game show in which contestants have 60 seconds in order to complete a certain challenge, which is supposed to just use normal household items. With a rainy day here in Vancouver, again, we decided to do a head-to-head -head version of Minute to Win It rather than the normal 60 second Minute to Win It challenges. So we didn't have a timer, it was pretty much who could ever complete the challenge first before the other person would win. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining to you the original 60 second Minute to Win It challenges in which one person tries to complete the challenge within 60 seconds as well as the head-to-head -head version and got all the materials that we needed at the dollar store so making it $12 only. If you're looking for something cheap and something fun to do inside with family friends or just as a couple we got you covered. We gathered all the rules all the supplies and we'll tell you exactly with examples that are totally not embarrassing at all for you to do minute to win it challenges yourself. Here we go! Welcome to my channel where I take on different challenges and adventures and I tell you my personal thoughts and experiences and hopefully that encourages you to take on adventures yourself. Now if that's something that starts your timer, maybe consider liking and subscribing. But let's get into the buying list of everything we need for all the games I'm going to talk about. We bought two packs totaling about 30 red solo cups, a package of 12 ping pong balls, a bag of balloons, meaning only two of them, but now we got extra for a party, two straws, a box of Smarties or M&Ms. You want the bigger ones that have at least 50. We used Skittles, box of circular cookies, thing of index cards, one unused pair of pantyhose and two tennis balls, but you can do it with one or a baseball. Again, this costs only $12 and some extra change. Now the games themselves, there's about 13 games that we decided to play. I'm going to tell you exactly the rules and each one of them will be explained under the 60 seconds in order to keep the spirit of Minute to Win It. If there's a specific game you're looking for, they will be down in the time codes, but let's get to the first one. Suck it up. In our head-to-head -head version, the goal of Suck It Up is to carry candies, such as Smarties, using only a straw as your own microscopic vacuum cleaner, and transfer a bag of approximately 50 candies into your plate. We went all out and used a giant bag and saw who could transfer the most. This took way longer and our lungs have never forgiven us, but I took the point here. A single player version can be played using a normal box of Smarties and the 60 second timer. The original Minute to Win It difficult version is to place the candies atop of four straws that are standing on a table, unsupported, which makes it very easy for them to knock over just as much as my self-esteem. This one is ridiculously difficult, and we did not do this one only because we forgot. Separation anxiety. The goal of this extremely OCD friendly game is to sort the 50 candy coated chocolates by color, each in a different cup. The trick here is that you only can use one hand and you must sort the candies one at a time according to the color pattern within 60 seconds. For our head to head, we did whoever could tap into their rainbow enthusiasm the most and complete the task the fastest. Turns out my girlfriend's OCD is stronger than mine and she took the victory. For added fun or just for more difficulty, you can force everyone to use their non-dominant stranger danger hand. Taste the rainbow. This is a complete B&B &B original that was not on the show and we created it since we already had these Smarties. The object of the game is to taste test one Smartie per color or whatever candy you choose. Go Team Skittles! While blindfolded, and you must guess what color it belongs to. You only get one guess per taste test and whoever guesses the most correctly wins. And a rainbow twist. This became a tie. We did one at a time because you can always take this challenge at the same time to add more psychological warfare and into the mix and trying to confuse your opponent. Face the cookie. Face the cookie is extremely simple, at least in theory. Sit in a chair or on a couch if you are a super casual as we are. Lean your head back and place one cookie in the center of your forehead. When the timer begins, you must move the cookie from your forehead to your mouth only using your facial muscles and the forces of gravity. If the cookie falls, reset it to the top of your forehead. You're gonna look like The Rock doing his wiggly eyebrow move thing. Uh, and you're gonna have a lot of crumbs on your face. A bonus if you're a huge fan of eating cookies. 
Our head-to-head -head version had us determine who had the strongest facial muscles by having the first person to get that delicious circular stuffed dessert into their mouth. I must have missed face day at the gym as uh, she took the victory in a landslide. Chocolate unicorn. When the clock starts, you begin using one hand to stack cookies one at a time on your forehead. To complete the game, you must create the eighth delicious wonder of the world by stacking a total of seven cookies, one on top of the other, on your forehead within the 60 second time limit. So the freestanding structure stays for exactly three seconds. If the creamy tower is to fall, you may use the same hand to restack them. Keeping up the cookie dominance, she took the win here as well. As a team option, you can have one person balancing them as the other places them on the head. This dynamic duo adds a layer of complexity. We only used six cookies because we ate too many cookies because we started when we were hungry uh, and the cookies that were left were compromised structurally and would not suffice in this serious head-to-head -head challenge. Ping pong bounce. In this simple game, you must bounce six ping pong balls into six different cups. Uh, a bit anticlimactic, I know, but this was the easiest game of the group. If you have any beer pong enthusiasts or you're looking to recruit someone for your team, this is the game to do it. Which is kind of weird that I took the win, but we both don't drink or go to parties, so our beer pong skills are not existent. You can always increase the difficulty by increasing the distance in which you need to bounce those pongs. If you're going very far, add some water to the cups because if you don't, they're gonna fall over every time. If you can mix this one with more challenging games or if you're playing with kids or family, that is a good confidence booster for those who need it. I needed it. Yank me! Stack four cups on top of each other with index cards in between each. Then, starting from the top, try to yank each paper without the cup falling and destroying your tower. You must end up with four cups stacked on top of each other within the time limit. A couple of hints, you want to yank those cards out as quickly as you can. Almost like that magician trick where you try to pull the tablecloth off of the table and keep all the cutlery on. Uh, don't try that magic trick with real cutlery unless you love cleaning broken plates. Perhaps that practice did become useful as I took the win here. We started with only stacking three cup towers as the index cards were a bit thin and the cups kept following through, but we transitioned to playing in the big leagues with four cups by using our engineering skills by stacking the index cards. Genius. Moving on up. To win, moving on up, you must take one cup from the stack of cups and move it to the bottom with one hand, then repeat the process with the other hand. The game continues in this way until the red cup has gone through the entire stack and resumes to its original place. The show version is usually done with 39 cups, with one cup a different color as your identifier, so you don't get lost. We didn't use that many cups as we wish to go head to head, and we have no reason to own so many red solo cups. We don't listen to that much country music. I took the win, even though I don't even really like country music. Stack, attack. Place 36 standard sides, plastic drinking cups into a perfectly aligned triangular tower, and then take the cups down one diagonal line at a time and restack the cups just as you started. Perhaps one of the easier ones to understand as most of us with an excess amount of cups have definitely done before trying to stack and create these towers when you have the time. She must have done this way more than I have as she took the win. We did not own a frat house amount of solo cups so our towers were just a bit smaller than Puddle Jumper. A game that's definitely going to require a towel after. You can place as many cups as you like in a row filled with water to nearly the edge of the cup. In our head-to-head -head version, the goal was to use our powerful wind creator, our lungs, to hop the ping pong ball down the row of cups and back. Whoever brought it back to the starting point won, but you could easily make the distance further and more difficult by creating an obstacle course and making them zig and zag or just making it very far. In the minute to win it version, you have three sets of jumps separated at pre-quarantine distances of three inches, six inches, and nine inches. You must make all three successful jumps before the 60 seconds runs out. This was the game we both decided was our favorite out of the list. 
and she said he had nothing to do with the fact that uh, she won. Ball drop. Another kid-friendly challenge that's not on the show called ball drop that has nothing to do with hitting a certain age in which that actually happens for real. Stand on a chair and land three ping pong balls in a single cup without bending your limbs. The trick is to not have the balls bounce out or knock the cup over in which you'll have to restart. This was our least favorite game, even if I took the win. It's quick, it's easy, which has nothing to do with uh, puberty. This blows. Set up 15 plastic cups in a row across the table. When the clock starts, the player may grab the balloon and begin to blow it up and try to knock over the cups off the table by using the air from the balloon itself. You may make the distance from the table much further to increase the difficulty. In our head to head, we did not count the number of cups and simply just filled the side of the table we are using. This is a much easier game and uh, making farting noises to knock things out was very juvenile and childlike. Which is why we enjoyed it and perhaps why I took the win. Lastly, elephant mock. All you need for this one is an unused pair of pantyhose and a tennis ball placed in one of the legs. We went with a tennis ball in each leg because uh, we're rebellious like that. The object of the game is to knock over eight cups placed around the room. To simulate an old timely bank robber or someone who has obvious problems, place the pantyhose over your head and use your body movements to knock over the cups. You cannot touch them, only the pantyhose can. The minute to win it version uses unopened water bottles as well as a center line. The bottles are four feet away from the center line and you cannot have both feet cross that center line. So one foot needs to be on each side. We have the exact same amount of experience with pantyhoses and frantically flailing everywhere. So that brought another tie. Some of my final thoughts. It was a very fun afternoon. It was very cheap. We only spent 12 bucks and we can use a lot of these things again. The only thing I feel bad is we got a lot of extra things that I don't think we're gonna go through, like a box of straws. I don't wanna just throw them out because, you know, environment. But the Red Solo Cups, there's a lot of different fun party games you can play. It's a great idea for parties. You can do kid-friendly versions of this. You can do this as a group and a great thing for friends and it's not a lot of money. If you were keeping count, I had six, there were two ties, and my girlfriend had five. So that means she definitely already challenged me to rematch, so we're definitely gonna do another one of these. Find these different games, see which ones are fun, which ones are not really that enjoyable, and maybe even have a ranking of which ones was our favorite to least favorite. I'm excited for that rematch. You don't stand a chance. That was really aggressive. Speaking about cheaper adventures, most of my adventures I find through Groupon and Airbnb experiences with links in the description down below. But that is my experience. What did you think? Are you gonna try these minute to win it challenges? Are there some that you've tried that are really, really fun? Let me know down below in the comments or hit me up on social media. I'd love to hear what you think, but I will see you at the next adventure.